And it looks like we are now live. So, hi everyone, as you're joining us, uh, it's great to be with you. We're so grateful that you have come to share in the celebration of our 16th annual Backpack Drive. Amazing that we um, continue to just grow and expand the ways in which through your support, we're able to really share uh, the generosity of spirit that moves through not only Unity on the Bay, but the amazing partners, uh, the nonprofits that we support, all of the people that really come together to make this happen year after year. So uh, welcome again. And uh, my name is Juan. I'm the Associate Minister at Unity on the Bay. And I'll just share really quickly that um, angels everywhere at the Backpack Drive was one of the first things that I ever became a part of when I came to Unity on the Bay about 17 years ago. Um, and so it's always had a special place in my heart and I'm so grateful that I can continue to be a part of it and that through the years it has grown to be what it is today. So with that, um, today we're going to just hear from our partners, our sponsors of the Backpack Drive. They're, they're amazing and I can't wait for you to learn more about them. And then we're also gonna hear about a couple of the nonprofit organizations that distribute these backpacks so you can learn a little bit more about them. Um, they all have a special message for each of you who uh, were a part of it. So with that, we're gonna turn it over to Unity on the Bay Senior Minister, Reverend Chris Jackson. Thank you, Juan, and good morning, everybody. This is a morning of celebration. I really want to honor and uh, appreciate your presence here with us. We're celebrating something that's truly amazing every year, but perhaps this year more than ever, it has had an impact that was so uh, sorely needed. And I believe that it shows, it demonstrates what can happen when we come together in unity, as our name implies, uh, to do a good work. I want to just take a moment to express some appreciation first to our entire community. This is always um, a village that puts this kind of activity together. And so for each and every one of you that supported this uh, drive in any way, I thank you. I wanna thank our mainstays. It seems like year after year, the beloved Veronica St. Alban, Renee Schaefer, Steve McCoy, Aquiles Ballestas, Cindy Binder, and Reverend Juan, I really want to thank you because I know you're the spearheading drive that makes this happen every year and uh, we all truly appreciate that. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge someone who I believe in a very real way is with us and that is our beloved Helen Vivian uh, who passed away um, since the last drive and yet I felt her presence so strongly even just this morning I had a little conversation with her kind of on the side and I said, Helen, don't you worry. We're gonna recognize that you are continuing to be with us. And there's no doubt in my mind with some of the hurdles that you all had to overcome that she was a driving force, perhaps this year more powerful in her contribution than ever. I also wanna acknowledge the relationships that I believe have been born out of service toward a common goal. And that is the relationship we have developed with uh, our sponsors in this event, namely City National Bank and Eddie Dominguez and Turnberry Associates and Bill Gorman. Thank you all from the bottom of our hearts. Now I invite you to close your eyes and open your mind and your heart to the truth of who you are, recognizing that our primary purpose for existing on this planet is to be of service, service to ourselves by caring for ourselves and supporting ourselves more than anything so that we are able servants that move out into the world as a powerful force for goodness. In what some would consider to be troubling times, we bring peace, we bring assurance, we bring blessed confidence that comes through the awareness of our oneness with each other, all those we have served through this drive and above all, with the spirit of truth, the spirit of God that is within us. We turn to that spirit now in gratitude and thanksgiving that we have been able to serve in the role of providing the goodness, the plenty, and the abundance of the Almighty to so many individuals, most especially the little children, those who Jesus himself admonished us 
to follow in the footsteps of, to see as examples in our lives, and to love and support as they prepare to move through their sojourn through human existence. This is perhaps one of the greatest gifts we can ever give, and we have been privileged and honored to give it. So it is in thanksgiving and gratitude that we acknowledge the Spirit of God in each one of us individually and the power that is generated when we work together for the glory of that which is divine. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you for that, Chris. And so uh, now, uh, in a little bit, you'll hear about some of the organizations and some of the uh, children that were supported by this program. But how about we take a look at their faces? So I'm going to go ahead and share with you a wonderful video that was prepared by our friends of uh, Turnberry Associates. Enjoy. I seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here, you can take a break. I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space. With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way. Huh. Because I'm happy, clap along. Thank you for uh, putting that together for us, uh, Bill. You know, and uh, as I, I saw that video again, it reminded me, I mean, Chris spoke a little bit about it, but um, I trust that you were able to see those smiling faces even through the masks. And um, that's just a sign of the things that we had to um, think about this year. And there were some additional challenges and ways in which we wanted to show up with the backpack drive. Uh, ensuring that we are following guidelines, that we are following safety, um, and that we are providing the kids with um, some sense of normalcy uh, through that. So I'm glad that we were able to do that. So now I'm going to introduce to you uh, one of our congregants who a couple of years back uh, just showed up with a bunch of backpacks in his car and uh, turned them into our annual backpack drive. And we had a conversation and we realized that um, through um, his work, uh, we'd be able to do a lot more. And so I'm so grateful that I can introduce to you Bill Gorman, who is the Vice President of Hotel Division for Turnberry Associates. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Reverend Juan. Uh, I thought I would just start this morning by first of all saying thank you. Thank you to Unity for allowing myself and Turnberry Associates to show up in our community, even during this precarious time. It's, it's really an honor for us to, 
to participate in this event every year. This is our 10th year and um, I'm just so honored and so grateful to my team. Uh, one of the people watching is Cheryl, who sat on weekly meetings with Reverend Juan and Achilles and myself and really went out of her way. So thank you, Cheryl. And to Lewis, uh, my HR director for promoting this internally. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that we were able to raise $15,000 in the middle of a pandemic. So just gratefulness is where I'm coming from this morning. I also wanted to uh, take a minute to kind of go back to May when Reverend Juan and I had our first communication about this year's Backpack Drive. And I thought there were some interesting dialogue in these emails, and I just wanted to share a few of them with you because I think you'll find them interesting. So uh, Reverend Juan had reached out to me and asked me to please get with him about the backpack drive. And I wrote him an email and uh, one of the questions I wrote to him were, uh, will there be any back to school this year? Who knows if schools will even be open? And Reverend Juan responded, most likely the schools will be open, but there'll probably be some restrictions. We really don't know yet. One thing we do know is that kids will need supplies regardless. And I just thought that really touched me. I thought it was really important to note whether a child is at home or in a school somewhere, they still need the supplies to learn. And that's what this is all about, changing, changing their lives. Um, one of the other things I wrote was, uh, will Achilles still be working with us? And for those of you who don't know, Achilles helps us with all the procurement and he stood right up and said yes, that he would. And we're so honored and grateful, Achilles, for your help uh, and, uh, as always, standing up for us. Um, another question I wrote, what if we're not able to do what we did last year? Because unfortunately, at Turnberry, one of the things we try to do is outdo ourselves, just like City National Bank does. Every year, we both want to do more and we want to contribute more. And you know, it was a, a concern of ours that we might be taking a step backwards. And um, Reverend Juan wrote back to me, we don't have to. Everyone knows this is an interesting year. It would be wonderful if we did, but it sort of took the pressure off of us and allowed us the freedom to sort of do the best we could with the situation that we had. And that's really all of us can do. Um, and the last thing I wrote was, how will we be able to move this forward with Helen not being there? And as Reverend uh, Jackson mentioned, uh, Helen Vivian was a cornerstone for us in this particular endeavor. And Reverend Juan said, Helen would just say, do whatever you can. And he also wrote that he loved the fact that I asked that question and that he missed her. So, you know, I just wanna say thank you, Helen, um, for you know, laying the path for all of us to continue to grow and do this. Again, very honored and um, very grateful to this group and to all of you who help us year over year. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Bill. Really oh. appreciate it. Huh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing, right? Because um, the backpack drive is not just the efforts that we each put into it, but the ways in which we come closer together and uh, we continue to deepen our relationships through this so, and expand them. So, uh, so thank you. And so now uh, I'd like to introduce you. And if you're uh, from Unity on the Bay, uh, you probably don't need this introduction, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways, uh, because he is not only the president of the board and the board, um, always plays a big role in supporting the backpack drive, but especially this year uh, was truly just very inspiring. And so he is Unity on the Bay's board president, and he is also the managing senior vice president at City National Bank, and that is Eddie Dominguez. <laughs> All right, let's unmute there and not have a, a Zoom moment where I start talking and uh... <laughs> um, anyways, good morning, everyone. It's great to uh, to see your faces, um, even if uh, through this digital format. Um, you know, I think we're all going through a bizarre um, at times, but definitely different um, experience with our lives uh, given this pandemic. But as we looked um, at this opportunity um, to give, and uh, and I think uh, Reverend Chris, you said it best in the in the prayer. 
and said to bring peace and bring assurance to kids in our community um, who you know are are probably struggling with this situation uh, more so than the rest of us um, with with you know such disruption of everything be it graduations and proms to kids in the higher uh, grade levels down to you know, kids who depend on our schools for nutrition and are now having to find other ways for their families to, to, uh, to, find, uh, to find that. It's definitely been a very uh, different and, 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 what's the word, uh, horrible time, I guess, to be a kid, right? If it's as bad as it is to be an adult right now. Um, so I think, you know, one of the things that we're very grateful for um, is to have had the opportunity, and I'm speaking on behalf of City National Bank and our 900 employees, um, to participate in some small part in bringing a sense of assurance and peace to kids in our community. Um, so thank you to Unity on the Bay uh, for that opportunity. I also want to thank um, all of the employees at City National Bank. This is an employee campaign. Um, they're the ones that give the money. Um, and we raised over $12,000 um, this year, um, despite the fact that most of us were working from home. Um, we all still came together um, for this great cause. Um, and I think it's reflective of how our folks feel about it. I wanna thank some members of my team, um, um, especially Catalina Diaz, who really did a lot of the coordination um, of it um, internally, but also to members of the executive team. One of the things that we do that's quite fun is um, we put up um, executives who do matches and challenges and um, you get an opportunity to make Eddie pay. You get, make, get an opportunity to make our, our different executives pay. And one of them, um, Howard Levine, who heads up our private bank and residential, is particularly successful. Um, I don't know why his employees really want to make him pay, but his challenge is always one of the most successful. So, um, so let's keep, keep going with those challenges. And thank you to all of the executives who um, supported this and really helped drive this through the organization. Um, I'm gonna change hats now and I'm gonna put my board president hat on now and say that you know, the board this year looked at this as an opportunity to continue um, you know, Helen's good work. And in her uh, memory, uh, we didn't know where we were gonna be as far as a community and supporting this this year and we wanted to give a little extra um, bit of support so we created a, a matching uh, fund of $10,000 um, for two reasons. Number one, we really wanted to ensure that this year's drive was successful and give that little extra kick to it, but also I think it was in recognition um, of Helen and her contribution, not just to the backpack drive and angels everywhere, but to our spiritual community um, at Unity on the Bay. Um, I also want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who gave um, to Bill and Turnberry Associates for your constant support. I think we've both been, as corporate sponsors, um, been doing this about the same amount of time, and, and I'm sure it's just as popular in your organization as it is um, in ours. Um, kids are a great cause and, and fortunately an easy cause to, uh, to raise money for. Um, I also want to thank all the volunteers um, with a special shout out to our board treasurer, Steve McCoy and Renee Schaefer, who I learned um, almost single handedly loaded all of these uh, backpacks into a truck in an unair conditioned warehouse to help make this possible. Um, I see the hard work that Steve, for example, does all the time and I really do want to take this moment um, to recognize both of them, but especially my brother on the board, Steve McCoy, um, for all of all that you did um, to help make this happen this year. Um, you know, that video was amazing. Um, you know, when you talk about smiling with your eyes, talk about seeing that um, for real um, as these kids, and, and even the ones that didn't have masks on smiling um, literally, but the ones, most of them had masks on and you could just see their eyes as they were being given um, this backpack, just the sense of happiness. Um, and that's what this is really about, That that, that energy and that sense of peace and assurance, as Reverend Chris said um, in the prayer, that I'm so grateful that as a community and as a sponsor, we are able to bring to um, so many kids um, in South Florida and beyond. So thank you to everyone who helped make this possible. Um, and back to you, Juan. Thanks so much, Eddie. So um, we're going to get to the numbers very soon. I know people are uh, waiting to hear just how much we were able to raise and what that meant uh, as far as backpacks.
but we wanted to also just um, give you uh, some insight into what's behind the numbers, right? Who are these children? Who are these nonprofit organizations that we support through it? So we're very grateful that we have Vanessa Urega, for, uh, who is the fundraising coordinator for Touching Miami with Love. And so she's gonna share a little bit about her organization and just a special message. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for having us on this panel. First of all, I wanna say just thank you to everyone for all the hard work. No AC in Miami and loading backpacks into a van, that is commitment right there. So I just wanna say just thank you to everyone. And I never had the honor or the opportunity of meeting this wonderful person, Helen, but I can just see that she has definitely made an impact. So um, I definitely feel her presence and her commitment as well. So thank you for, for sharing such heartfelt message. So TML is a nonprofit that we are located in Overtown and West Homestead. We are actually celebrating our 25th year anniversary this year. And that is such a huge milestone. Uh, we first started in Overtown and then we expanded over to West Homestead, which is amazing, but that also goes to show that there is a need in our, in our, in our communities. So we serve about 200 children and youth in Overtown and we serve about 250, close to 300 in West Homestead. And we have, you know, the, the um, COVID-19 pandemic really uh, made us take a pivot during our, you know, our spring and summer programs, but, you know, we're just very thankful to our supporters, of course, thankful that, you know, uh, God at the center of it all has managed to open up doors for us and new opportunities as well. As our fall program starts, we're taking a new approach. So we are doing a TML on the go and that is basically different locations close to close enough to our families where we're able to have our enrichment programs close to them. So some, some families don't have vehicles or a way of transportation. So we're able to set up stations close to their homes and have uh, you know, non-contact sports, our academic support and other uh, enrichment activities. And then we're also providing some in-person programming too for those families that have to go to work and don't have a place to leave their their children. So we're more than you know what people might seem at think that we are in after school care. We are um, all hands at a socially distant level, of course, all hands on deck, and uh, we're just here for our families, our children, our youth. And we thank you so much because, like uh, someone said earlier, I believe it was Mr. Gorman or Mr. Reverend Chris, uh, that regardless whether children are doing school online, they still need supplies and they still need the pencils and they still need the support. And the, the, just the truth is, is that our family needs us regardless of whether in person or, or, or virtual. Uh, some of our families don't even know how to use a, a laptop, you know, so we're able to guide them through a phone call. Uh, we, we were able to bless our families with a hot spot during the summer. So we're thankful for, for our supporters for that. So we're just very thankful to be here and we're so grateful for the backpacks and the supplies. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Vanessa. We really appreciate the partnership and I don't even know if you're aware or the people that are watching are aware, but we have a long history with Touching Miami yes. with Love. We've been partners with them for many, many years. And actually when I first came to Unity on the Bay in 2002 or three, uh, our executive director was a gentleman by the name of Larry Wynn who had previously been the executive director of Touching Miami with Love. And so uh, we have a long, long history and they were um, some of the first uh, people that we uh, connected with through uh, an organization, an interfaith organization, uh, Faith in the City that we were a part of. So thank you again, Vanessa, for all your work. Thank you. And now we want to introduce to you uh, somebody who also has a long history with Unity on the Bay personally, um, but also um, uh, the organizations themselves. Uh, we are blessed to have been one of the first partners of Chapman Partnership for the Homeless uh, when they created their downtown um, center. One of our volunteers from Unity on the Bay actually helped design the kitchen there 
to make it as um, easy for volunteers to be in service. And even during this pandemic, I'm really grateful that Unity on the Bay has not only continued to support um, Chapman Partnership through the backpacks, but also through their feeding program. And so um, hopefully I didn't just steal everything you were gonna say. <laughs> but, no, uh, you're right I'm on gonna, point. <laughs> I'm gonna introduce to you uh, Wendy uh, Viciana, who is the Senior Manager of Community Outreach and Engagement at Chapman. Good seeing you, Wendy. Thank you, Juan. Yes, nice to see you, Reverend Chris, and everyone on the call. It's, I'm glad I made it on. So yes, that's, that's absolutely correct. And fun fact, the way I came to Chapman many, many years ago was as a volunteer at Unity. When we'd go serve, and you guys still come serve the meals once a month. So there is definitely a long history there. But truly, um, you know, our mission for 25 years at Chapman Partnership is to provide the resources and tools to empower our 800 homeless men, women, and children in both of our centers. Um, we've been doing that for a long time, but it is impossible to do that work without the support of our community. And you, Unity on the Bay has been one of those longtime supporters that really recognizes the importance of our work and I would say not even just our work, the community. You guys are such champions in this community and such uh, change agents. So I, we're just really, really blessed to be part of the Unity family and, and vice versa. And um, yes, so everything from meals every month, once a month, supporting the meal program, the backpacks, uh, which we rely on every single year. Um, it really, it takes a village. So you guys are a big part of that village, but for all the donors, thank you so much for the support. Uh, truly, we, we run our program there at Chapman Partnership. We have close to 150 school-age kids, but our, our program is so comprehensive that it extends beyond the soup kitchen model. You know, they stay there for a certain amount of time. We help them with jobs. Uh, job placement, and then housing for the families. But we also care for the follow-up families um, after they've left for up to a year. And before they even get there, if there's no space, we put them in an off-site facility. So what does that mean with partnerships like Unity and the Backpacks is not only are those supplies coming into our center and the kids that are at our center, but they're also being sent to those off-site those folks waiting to come in and the kids that have moved on that are still under our care. So the reach is, is quite extensive. Um, and uh, it, it's just a, a wonderful partnership and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you everyone who supports Backpacks. We work with Renee and she's, she's a hoot and she just, I love getting her call every, every year and picking that up and, and it's, it's just a joy. So thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And we appreciate mm -hmm. you being a part of uh, the celebration today. So um, one last organization that we wanted to just introduce to everybody who uh, wasn't able to be on here is No More Tears. Um, and the founder and director of it, uh, Somia Lee, uh, was scheduled to be with us. Um, her organization supports um, uh, families uh, and uh, really women and children that have been sex trafficked. And so she does amazing, amazing work and that organization does amazing work. And the reason why she's not able to be here is because she was called into a court um, room uh, to support one of the victims um, in one of the cases. So, um, but as you can tell already from just what's been shared, the uh, breadth of the type of nonprofits that we support through the backpack drives is extensive. So, uh, and you can find out more about No More Tears by going to their website. Um, all right, so who's ready to learn how we did this year? I want to. I want to see the panelists go crazy. <laughs> all right. Well, first, I just want to again give you. Um, the breadth of just how many nonprofits we support. Just gonna go really quickly through them, but I want you to hear it. Amigos for Kids, the Boys and Girls Club of Miami Gardens, Chapman Homeless, uh, Partnership of the Homeless, Children's Home Society, Classic Girlfriends Forever, Cope North, uh, the department, uh, it's basically DP, DCPS Upstart, Dominican Joe, who sends backpacks to the Dominican Republic, orphanages in the Dominican Republic, Educate Tomorrow, Federation of Families, 
fraternity church. This is an interfaith uh, backpack drive that we um, support. Haitian orphanages, Holy Redeemer School, Jesse Trice Community Center, Jewish Community Services, the Lotus House. There's one more, Miami Bridge, Miami Children's Initiative. We send some backpacks to uh, families in Nicaragua. No More Tears, Olinda Elementary. Each of the children at Olinda Elementary receive a backpack. Omega Power and Praise Ministries, Pedal for Hope, Pride Lines that works with LGBTQ uh, children. Renman Haitian Orphanages, Rising Stars, who actually send some backpacks to uh, an orphanage in Ghana, in Africa. St. Philip's uh, School, St. Alvin Head Start Program, some Syrian refugee families that are in South Florida, the Ludge, Touching Miami with Love. We were able to um, provide some support to some families from Turnberry, some families from Unity Center of Miami, a sister Unity Church in uh, South Miami, and Unity on the Bay's own uh, Youth and Family Ministry. So all of those organizations were able to be supported. Are you panelists, are you ready? We were able to raise over $42,000 and provide 4,900 backpacks to children all over South Florida, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and Ghana. So yay for us. And I want you all to know that through these continued partnerships, if this wasn't enough to bring a huge smile to your face, since the inception of the Backpack Drive, and you know, once City National Bank got involved and once Turnberry got involved, it just uh, launched us into a whole new atmosphere. But together, um, through these partnerships, we have now given 38,850 backpacks to children all over. Yes. So thank you for being a part of that. Coronavirus can't stop us. <laughs> well, again, I just want to say thank you to our partners, uh, our sponsors, Turnberry Associates, City National Bank, uh, both uh, representatives that are on this call because really we know that our relationship um, is so strong as a result of how you feel and how you connect to Unity on the Bay and our programs and how much we get to love on you. Uh, all the time. So thank you again. Thank you to Vanessa, Wendy, and the over 30 nonprofit organizations that were able to distribute these backpacks this year. And with that, as we uh, bid you all farewell, we're going to do so in style. So <laughs> let's all <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank <laughs> Thanks you. so much. Bye. Bye. I think everyone's going to wait to see you dance, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a long wait. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great day.